Thanks very much. Um, again, I'm, I'm Piyush Varshney. I'm the President and CEO of Canada Zinc Metals Corp. And, uh, you know, we are probably the only pure zinc uh, presenter here today. I think there's a lot of gold companies, uh, a few base metal uh, companies and a few graphite companies, but we're, um, I think, the only pure zinc play out here. And, uh, you know, the, Zinc has been gathering more and more attention over the last year. I mean, the price of zinc has moved up from about uh, 70, 70 cents about a year ago to $1.30. So it's up almost uh, 80% or so, um, certainly leading the base metal uh, spectrum out there. So, you know, there's very few uh, zinc juniors out there. And uh, of those few, there's even fewer that have quality deposits. And I think we're, we're certainly ranked amongst the, the top. We basically are based in... Uh, British Columbia, all of our properties are, are in a district called the Kachika uh, Trough. Two main assets are the Akai deposit, that's our flagship property. You know, that's the roughly 30 million tons of about 10% zinc lead. It's eight and a half zinc, one and a half lead, and some silver. So it's about five to one uh, zinc to lead uh, ratio. And then the second asset is the Kachika Regional Project, which is a massive you know, district scale holding right next, right next to the main deposit. So, you know, just quickly on zinc, I mean, it, you know, it is uh, the third most used non-ferrous metal in the world after aluminum and copper. Uh, its primary use is for galvanizing steel, so, so you're rust proofing uh, steel. So anywhere that, that uh, you know, there's infrastructure being built, uh, buildings, railways, automobiles, anywhere that there's steel that's being used, there's often a coating of, of zinc uh, to keep the steel from rusting. And what we're seeing is, you know, obviously with the, uh, policies that Trump's putting in place, uh, you know, trillion dollars of, of new infrastructure with uh, emerge, uh, developing nations like China and uh, uh, Indonesia and others around the, uh, the Asian belt. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure that's being rebuilt and, and built for the first time. So the demand uh, anticipated increase over the next, you know, 10 years continues to go up and we'll have a slide on that shortly. But what's happened is some of the largest zinc mines in the world have shut down over the last 18 months. Almost 15% of the world's zinc supply has come off stream due to depletion of existing mines. And, there, and there's nothing new of size that's coming in to replace that. And so that's what's led to the current situation in terms of the fundamentals for zinc. Uh, a lot of supply is going off stream with very little new supply coming on stream and the demand moving upwards. So some of the... Uh, Mines that have shut down, uh, you know, the Brunswick mine in Canada that Extrata used to own, uh, Perseverance Canada, Century in Australia has shut down last year, Lachine in Ireland, and, and Scorpion will be shutting down shortly. So some of the big mines are shutting down. The opportunity, I mean, these are some recent comments, you know, uh, uh, RBC Capital Markets in January of this year. I mean, they've got forecasts for zinc, which is currently $1.30 a pound. Uh, you know, dollar thirty-five next year, uh, a size of dollar fifty in two thousand twenty. So we're not talking about a, a you know a, a brief increase in the price of zinc. We're talking about an extended uh, shortage that is going to lead to a higher and higher price of zinc over the next uh, well, tech thinks decade, uh, but this goes up for the next sort of five, three or four years. These are some slides that we've taken from Tech, who happens to be one of our shareholders. But you know, you can see the the structural deficit that's in place on the supply side. Um, you know, it, it's only growing right through to 2020 here, uh, but certainly a great scenario for companies like ours that are focused on zinc. Here's a projection right out through 2025. You can see the demand curve there, and here's the uh, supply side of primary sources of zinc and secondary sources of zinc, recycling and whatnot, and you can see that the gap is just getting larger right through for the next decade. Management director, so yeah, I work in a family office in Vancouver with my brother and father, both chartered accountants, I'm a corporate lawyer by training, and my focus is the, the resource uh, side of the business. 90% uh, of my time is on Canada Zinc Metals because the opportunity here is, is massive. We're undervalued, which I'll get to shortly as well. And given what's going on in the zinc space, I think there's tremendous upside uh, for our shareholders and, and for uh, all stakeholders. One of the companies that we have been involved in from the uh, initial discovery hole was Mountain Province Diamonds. 
So, you know, it's been, it's been 20 years, but, uh, you know, we, we got involved in the very first drill hole. That was Kimberlite, um, Diamondiferous. We brought De Beers into the uh, um, project, and now um, the project has held 51% De Beers, 49% Di Mountain Province Diamonds. And so my father, brother, brother, and I, we flew up to the mine opening in September, and now we are in full production uh, on, on this uh, project. But, you know, we'll stay with the projects for as long as it takes to maximize value for all of our stakeholders, and, and that's an example of one where... You know, Mountain Province now has a market cap of approaching a billion dollars. Um, Dr. John Thomas, he's a PhD in metallurgy, he's on our board. Marco Strube is a portfolio manager out of Zurich, he's on our board. Ken McDonald is our VP Exploration, uh, very strong technically, but what Ken also brings to the table is he worked with the BC Ministry of Mines and Energy, so he's worked in government, so he knows the permitting side of things extremely well. And so, you know, like any project anywhere in the world, permitting is, is key to, to moving projects forward. So one of the things Ken did was he actually led, before he joined us, he led the permitting team for the Mount Milligan project that Terrain Metals owned. So, so Ken led the permitting team, got it fully permitted to be a mine, and then Thompson Creek Metals came out and bought the company for $650 million or thereabouts. So he has that ability to get this thing fully permitted uh, and, and into a mining situation. So we are the dominant landholder in the Kichika Trough, as I mentioned. Uh, it hosts several large base metal deposits. We own 100% of our, our properties, and uh, we have a large 43-101 compliant resource at Cardiac Creek uh, on the Akai property. And we're located only 20 kilometers from a deposit that Tech and Korea Zinc own. So our neighbor happens to be a large zinc mining uh, player. 158 million shares outstanding. Uh, on average, we do about 135 to 150,000 shares a day. We have about $7 million in the treasury. And, uh, you know, we've attracted uh, some large base metal mining groups to our shareholder roster. And I think that speaks to the evidence of, of what we have here. Tongling Non Ferrous Metals is a state owned enterprise out of China. They're primarily a copper uh, explorer, miner, and smelter. They have a zinc and lead smelter as well, and we're the only company that they've invested in outside of China that is in the zinc space. So they actually own about 32% of the company. Uh, it's a passive investment. They have no rights to concentrate, uh, no offtake, no anti-dilution rights. It's really just a, a shareholding. They're the same company that bought out uh, Corriente Resources about five or six years ago. They paid $680 million for some undeveloped copper deposits in Ecuador. So they're not afraid to write a big check for a venture-listed company with, with large undeveloped deposits. Jintuo uh, is another Chinese group. They saw Tongling invest, and they, they know that Tongling is uh, able to write a big check for, for these sorts of projects. So they own about 6% of the company. And then more recently, Tech and Korea Zinc have become shareholders as well. I mean, their shareholding is relatively small, but a bigger thing for us was they are now spending money earning into some of our earlier stage claims. And, and clearly, you know, companies like this, you know, I, actually, I don't know any other junior that can say they have three, you know, large mining groups of shareholders. But uh, we've also had Lundin Mining in, in, on the roster as well. Uh, their senior vice president of business development and exploration loves the project, used to work with tech. So Lundin has been there. And we've also had an offer from Extrata Ventures, um, who also wanted to earn into the belt. So it's attracting large base metal mining groups because it is a large deposit and it's a district scale. Um, opportunity. And, and we know these sorts of companies, they don't invest to play the stock market uh, to look for a return on their investment. They're, they're there because they think this is something that they might want to own and mine, ultimately. Here is uh, the asset right here. Our main project is the Akai property in yellow, but we also own all of the pink and all of the red. I mean, that's a 140 kilometer stretch of very prospective claims. Uh, the blue is tech and Korea Zinc. So the CERC deposit is only 20 kilometers from Akai, and uh, it's roughly 40 million tons of the same grade. We're 30 million tons. We're open for expansion along strike and at depth. So as we drill this out further, you know, we think this could be 40 to 50 million tons or bigger. The grades seem to be getting higher as we go deeper here. Um, it's a SEDEX style deposit. SEDEX deposits are found often in a series of, of blobs or peas in a pod, pearls on a necklace. So we're confident that there's other deposits to be d discovered along this belt, um, as that's how these systems are formed. So you've got a big deposit here at Akai, a large one 20 kilometers away here at uh, Cirque. Mount Alcock, which is only 20 kilometers from Cirque, 
has a historical drill hole that was about nine meters of nine and a half percent zinc lead. So same grade as here, same grade as here, very similar. So we think Mount Alcott could also be another big deposit. So we've got this upside for our shareholders of not only you know, the, the base value given here at, at the flagship, but that blue sky potential of new discoveries, which I think you know, has tremendous upside for, for existing shareholders. And these pink claims are the claims that tech has optioned from us. So again, we, we've left the main deposit unencumbered. We don't want to give up any of that. But tech and Korea Zinc are spending money earning into these three claims here. And so usually it's a junior that goes to a senior and says, can we earn into one of your earlier stage claims? But here we have the opposite, where a senior has come to us asking if they can earn into some of our earlier stage claims. That's just me in uh, Tongling City in China. Uh, so again, so there, there are some of their facilities, their refineries and smelters. I've talked about tech's earn-in and Korea Zinc. So I mean, tech is as a large uh, base metal miner based out of uh, Canada. Uh, they only have one operating zinc mine. It's the Red Dog Mine in Alaska. And uh, they have a large zinc smelter in, in British Columbia, where, where our properties are located. So. What we're seeing is over the last three years, tech has been showing more interest and um, uh, not only in, in us, but also in their sort deposit. Um, because after Red Dog, you know, I, I think this has a high chance of being their next big zinc mining camp. They have a $3.5 million expenditure to earn a 51% interest in those earlier stage claims. And an additional five million, so a total of 8.5 million, would get them 70% of those three earlier stage claims. To date, they've spent about three million, so they're on their way to earning into that first option. So right now, in terms of the infrastructure, it's actually relatively uh, advanced. There's the main deposit here at Cardiac Creek on the Akai deposit, uh, Akai property, and there's the district play right there. So right now, you can drive to the deposit all year round. There's there's you can access it by roads all, all seasons. Those roads connect down to the town of Mackenzie, where existing rail goes to Trail BC, where tech has its zinc smelter. And the existing rail also goes to Prince Rupert, which is a deep sea port. So the Chinese group sees that as a, an option to, to shipping concentrate to their smelters in China. And then the largest hydropower plant in BC is on Williston Lake here. So you're not having to build roads. You don't have to build a railroad. Uh, you can do a tie into this power plant. So the infrastructure is actually very well advanced um, for this project. All of it is, in, is located in the Selwyn Basin, which is you know, a world, fam world famous zinc lead basin, it's primarily in the Yukon. But we're this finger down here in British Columbia, where there's more infrastructure and, and more communities. Um, so we are part of this world class basin, but just in a more favorable area in, in BC. The work we've completed, so, so we just put out a new resource uh, last May. Now we have 104 holes in our, in our deposit model. 71% of the resource is indicated category, so high confidence. 29% is inferred. Um, ultimately, this will be an underground mining situation, and we're an ideal underground mine because we have a, a large rectangular slab of mineralization that is 1.3 kilometers along strike, 800 meters dip, and on average 20 meters wide. So it's this you know, very consistent, predictable, massive rectangular slab of mineralization that you could get at from underground. We have the uh, surface drill permits in place. We have the underground exploration permits in place. And we're current with all the engineering and environmental baseline studies for the permitting. So these are just some of the holes. You know, we, you know, we're getting uh, 15 meters of 20% zinc lead. You're getting 9 meters of 17% zinc lead, 25 meters of 15% zinc lead. We had, you know, Boliden, uh, Sumitomo Metals, uh, you know, Lundin, Tech. Everyone's calling us based on these sorts of drill results. I mean, it, it's very good grade, very large uh, in, a, in a safe jurisdiction. There's the block model. So there is the deposit right there. The red is the indicated resource. The yellow is the inferred resource. And it is open a long strike, and it's open at depth for further expansion. The resource itself, so we've used a very conservative 5% zinc cutoff. And you're coming up with almost 20 million tons of, of just under 10% zinc lead. And then the inferred category, again, using 5% zinc cutoff, uh, is almost another 8 or 9 million tons. So open for it further expansion, a long strike, and at depth. We just put out a, new, a news release a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll have two drills mobilized to the property in May, drilling in June. So there's going to be a lot of drilling uh, 
uh, as we think again, there's there's a lot of room for expanding the deposit and, and increasing the confidence further. So in the ground value, I mean, we're, we're talking about almost 5 billion pounds of zinc, you know, just under a billion pounds of lead. Uh, at today's prices, you know, that's almost 8 billion Canadian dollars of, of metal in the ground. Our market cap is only 55 million, um, with 7 million of uh, cash in the treasury as well. So we, we're trading cheap. Um, we haven't been marketing much the last two, few years because nobody was interested in base metals or, or in zinc. But with the increase in, in, in the zinc price over the last year, uh, we've started to, again, get out to, to shows like this to start telling the story because it really is, uh, I think, a world-class play and it's undervalued. I met with the TD Securities analyst in Toronto um, who, who, uh, had not, who had not heard of us. And after he heard of us, he actually started including us in his peer comparison. And it's six companies that he's following. And, and on average, the peer group is trading at 2.6 cents per pound of zinc equivalent in the ground. And Canada Zinc Metals is trading at 0.8 cents per pound of zinc equivalent in the ground. So we're, we're trading not even a third of the value given to our peer group in, in, this, in this chart that he has. So you know, based on that, if we even just achieve the average uh, of the peer group, we'd be trading $1.10. Right? We're more at 36, 37 cents right now. So I do think it's a, a compelling opportunity at, at current share prices, and given the fact that we're going to be drilling starting in, 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 in June. Uh, this is more of a, a bit of a technical slide, but basically what we're seeing is there's a repeat thrust in the belt. So, you, you know, it's not, there's one fold, there's a second fold, and there's a third fold. So, you know, our, our geologists believe that in the belt, there are three parallel mineralized horizons. So you've got uh, Cirque and Mount Alcock as the western panel. You've got... Cardiac Creek and the targets that Tech has on these properties as the central panel, and they also believe there's an eastern panel. So there may be three massive slabs of mineralization here just on the Akai property, and we've only focused on the central panel. So tremendous upside for, for new discoveries, even just here at Akai. The Kachika properties, which I've talked about, again, we think there's new discoveries that are going to be found in this belt as we get out here and explore. Mount Alcock is one of the areas we believe uh, has a high chance of developing into another deposit. The geology here is very similar to Cirque and very similar to Akai. There is the Mount Alcock project. Again, they, uh, you know, this big barite zone here where nothing grows. Uh, geologists love seeing that, um, often evidence of, of mineralization. There's the one hole of just under nine meters of about nine and a half percent zinc lead. There's been no drilling here for like 20 years, so it's, it's definitely an area that we want to go explore and, and see if there, that other deposit is, is forming here. A couple more technical slides here. Again, very uh, similar mineralization to, to the Cirque deposit, same structural panel. To date, the drilling has been rather shallow, and that's where that one hole was that we talked about uh, there. But our geologists actually believe the target is actually deeper. That's where you're going to see a much larger mineralized horizon down here, potentially. Pi is one of the claims that Tech has optioned from us. Again, you can't see it here, but there's rust-colored water coming out of the hillside, these Gaussens, evidence of mineralization. Geologists want to get out there and explore what's causing this water to change color and come out of the, out of the hillside but certainly very uh, prospective ground that, that tech has option from us. So upcoming work programs. So we've got, uh, as I mentioned, a two drill program starting uh, mobilizing in May, drilling in June. Roughly about 7,500 meters of drilling. We'll be uh, drilling to expand the deposit as well as infill. Um, we're gonna be doing some metallurgical testing as well. To date, the metallurgy has been fantastic. It's been a clean concentrate. There's no deleterious elements. So the, a few of the zinc companies that are out there, you know, waving their flag right now, I mean, they have bad metallurgy. There's, there's mercury, there's manganese, there's a, a number of negative elements. We've had a clean concentrate uh, thus far. So we'll be doing some additional metallurgical work. We're uh, talking to a, a, a group out of BC, JDS Mining, about commencing a, a PEA on the project. Um, you know, they're, they're a group that have built mines in BC, and they've seen the project. They said, if you ever build it, they want to build it. They really like it. Um, 
you know, we're looking at potentially uh, drilling some other targets on Akai. And then the Mount Alcock project is, is one we're actually in, in, in discussions with a few groups who are interested in optioning Mount Alcock from us. So we'll get other groups spending money um, on that exploration. As I mentioned, the, 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 here's, here's the, uh, the mineralized horizon again. It's the deeper targets that really interest us because the grades are getting higher as we go deeper on this deposit. So, I mean, this is totally open down here. So some of those targets will be these holes that we've outlined. In summary, so the Cardiac Creek Akai property, it's one of the largest undeveloped zinc lead deposits in the world. We're attracting investment from large base metal mining groups with three already invested. Lundin has been there, as I mentioned, Extrata Ventures has, has proposed something to us. Um, we don't have any uh, offtake agreements, so it's still open for other groups to approach us uh, on this. And we have a few others that we're talking to. Uh, we are the dominant landholder in this whole district with Tech and Korea Zinc as our neighbors. All the claims are in good standing until 2025. We have the permits in place to drill from surface and go underground. The infrastructure in the area is relatively well advanced. Um, you know, one thing we're thinking of doing is actually spinning out the regional claims into another public company. I don't think the market's giving us value for it right now. So if you're a shareholder of Canada Zinc Metals, uh, you would get free shares of the spin out company. So you'd have the main deposit held in Canada Zinc Metals, and you'd have shares of Explorco that would be exploring those other um, properties in the belt. But that would be one way of immediately crystallizing value for existing shareholders. And all of this is, uh, you know, on this backdrop of this chronic shortage of zinc that's happening right now, you know, coincidental with the depletion of these major zinc mines that have shut down over the last 18 months with a few more to still shut down, there's very limited new mine developments um, coming forward. So, so very bullish views on zinc. Thank you for, for your attention. Yeah.